Welcome everybody to uh, RFID hacking, live free or RFID hard. Uh, my name is Fran Brown. I'm a managing partner at Bishop Fox, uh, formerly Stack and Lou. Uh, we just rebranded it um, and got some exciting stuff to show you guys here today. Uh, I'm just going to get right into it. Uh, basically, what I want to go over today uh, is to cover practical advice on successfully performing a penetration test of an RFID physical security system. And a little bit of background behind this. Uh, about a year ago, I was doing an assessment of an uh, electric utility and I needed to get to their SCADA network, which was only accessible from two buildings. So I needed to break into a building. That's how it all started. Um, and that was my goal. Uh, so, I started <coughs> so I started looking into um, you know different uh, RFID presentations that have been in the past. Unfortunately, there was no hacking exposed RFID. <coughs> that just let me know what I would need to know to be able to break into a building. So I watched all the past presentations I could find, anything I could find, and after a couple days, I realized I was no closer to achieving my objective than you know, I was when I started. Uh, most of the presentations in the past. Uh, discuss tools that weren't either weren't released or were more theoretical. They didn't give me exactly what I needed to know to be able to break in um, to a building. So that's what I hope to cover here today. And I'm going to finish up with uh, uh, practical defenses as well, uh, so you know how to protect yourself. So breaking it down, uh, it's a pretty simple methodology. When I want to do an RFID penetration test, um, it, it just boils down into three simple steps. Uh, first, steal somebody's badge information without them realizing it while walking by them. Uh, two, taking that information and making a clone of their card. And then three, going into the building that I want to break into uh, and possibly planning a back door so I don't have to stay there very long. Seems pretty simple. Um, but the thing that I, uh, that I soon realized that uh, step one was a little bit difficult because most of the tools out there uh, required you to get within a couple centimeters uh, to be able to successfully steal someone's badge information out of their pocket or their purse or you know what have you. So which that kind of led to what I like to call the ass grabbing method of RFID hacking. Um, I watched these are all from different uh, presentations, YouTube videos, uh, things I've seen in the past where uh, you know the people go on and on about how insecure it is and how easy it is to steal somebody's badge information, and then they have things like this where you know they're walking up and grabbing people's asses with a Proxmark run down their you know sleeve with a big CD sized antenna, and you know walking around ass grabbing. Um, I don't know how many. <laughs> you see uh, Jonathan West Hughes up there. Um, yeah, I, I don't know how many times you could potentially do that, walk around and, and you know a target facility and, and start grab assing and before you actually get caught. Uh, I'd imagine maybe once or twice. So this wasn't a realistic thing for me. I mean this isn't going to work. I, I'm not sure what I could do at this point but uh, there's not really any tools that are out there uh, that would allow me to, to realistically be able to pull this type of attack off. So I started looking into um, my own custom solutions and with that I'm going to do a couple quick videos that I think uh, demonstrate uh, the limitations as well as our tools for uh, uh, stealing uh, for step one there and making a clone of a card just to show how easy it is now to be able to pull this off and steal someone's badge number and then break into a building. So I'm going to go to. So you, can you guys see that okay? Buy by far the most popular. Okay. So in this first one, um, this is uh, kind of demonstrating the. Pro how many of you here are familiar with the Proxmark? Three. Okay, it's probably you know number one tool you could buy. Um, it, it, it's actually really great for a lot of purposes. Oh. Sorry about that. It's too much for the microphone. Um, but I, as you'll see here, it, it also uh, has the the problem of this of distance. This is the Proxmark. Uh, this is a RFID hacking tool you could buy. By far the most popular. Um, we have it's plugged into my laptop here um, via USB and then via another cable there's the antenna. And we see that right now we are running the Prots Mark and we, are ha we have it in listening mode. It's, it's trying to read right now. So as we can see it still does not see the card even at this range. So I'll keep going down, keep going down, 
getting closer to the antenna. Closer still until there we go. 6339. We have to be within probably about an inch right here before it actually starts picking up the badge information. 6339. So this is about how close you have to get to somebody on their person to be able to effectively use this tool to steal their information, which is a little too close for comfort if you ask me. So, I mean, uh, how many people here have pulled off successful penetration tests with the Proxmark or, or whatever existing tools that are out there? Handful, handful of people. Um, it's I, I wasn't. I mean, I guess you could, but you saw the uh, the antenna, and it's about the size of a CD. And typically, people would run it down their sleeve and have the CD, and you know, try to go up and guess where the person has their badge on them to begin with. Uh, if you don't know which pocket it is, you know, and start you know feeling around. Um, so uh, I. I saw a few things uh, where people had posted custom solutions that they had done. Um, they didn't really release code or, uh, you know, practical advice on how to how to put it together. So I kind of had to do my own thing. Um, uh, it'll be up on the website uh, tomorrow. But my goal here was to make it so that I can create a tool that security professionals who, you know, don't know a lot about RFID or uh, have an electrical engineering background or you know, are going to build their own custom antennas. It's just your average security professional who wants to be able to perform this kind of pen test uh, so they can get up and running realistically uh, uh, quickly. So, the wouldn't it be great if there was a tool that took that step one that allowed us to secretly steal this information without having to go up and grab somebody's butt? So, um, as a crazy uh, random happenstance, we do have such a tool. 6339 again. We look to my left here. This is what I'm uh, calling the Tastic uh, Long Range RFID Stealer. Any uh, Dr. Uh, from my company, here? Bishop Fox. No, right, and we see here just a weaponized commercial reader. So we'll go ahead and throw that up there, and you can see it's a 26 bit card. Run it again. Soda Kill 113 and card number 6339. So it, uh, it outputs it to the screen uh, nice as well. I'm clearly um, uh, a few feet away uh, right now. Uh, and with this, I can steal the information without having to go and grab somebody's butt. So taking a little quicker look at what, uh, what this tool is actually doing and how the circuit board comes into play, I'm going to turn this off. And we can see that it is about a foot by a foot um, and only an inch deep. Extremely light, portable. Have a missile switch on the back here, which I was using um, to uh, not accidentally turn it on, things like that. Uh, it's completely uh, self powered and portable. So, what you would do is take this, put it in your messenger bag or backpack um, or briefcase, walk around with it. Uh, walk by somebody from up to three feet away and pick up their badge information, uh, which is much better than you know grabbing butts up here. Um, it's not only does it write it to the screen, but we actually see uh, it's easy to uh, take apart here. Just a single screw in the front, thumb screw that I can just twist out and take the lid off. What we have here is this is a long distance uh, commercial uh, badge reader, the kind that you would find in parking lots um, so that you don't have to get out of your car. You can just roll it on your window and reach your arm uh, out of the car window and hold your badge out and get it picked up. So it's meant to be picked up from several feet away. Um, all of this was in here to begin with. All I did was add the LCD screen, the batteries to self power it, and you will recognize this circuit board here. Uh, which you have without all of the things already installed, but um, it has all the logic, the code uh, behind it will be on our website for you to download as well. And this is just an Arduino uh, controller that you can buy online on Amazon, Radio Shack, um, as well as just some uh, resistors and a few things there you can pick up anywhere. Um, we have we'll have detailed instructions on the website on how to recreate this, uh, which is our main goal here. Um, 
Um, and finally, we see we have a uh, micro SD card, uh, which not only was it writing it, but it was actually writing it to the SD card in cards.txt, a text file. So, so pretty cool. Um, basically, yeah. thank you. Thank you. So, uh, you know, for those who are really attached to it, the ass grabbing methodology is still at your disposal if that's what you want to do. Um, but uh, this, I think, is you know a much better solution. Uh, and as you can see, it's super light, um, got just self-powered, uh, completely portable. Um, picks it up from a couple feet away, as opposed to a centimeter or two. Um, and yeah, so effectively, this was my attempt at solving that step one of those three steps. Um, And then I just have one more video uh, which shows you step two, uh, which I mentioned I like the prox mark uh, for a lot of card. things, but this is show uh, the output of a I'm just going tool. to pop it into my laptop. It should come up over here. So we should see the SD card uh, came up. That I pulled from our long range RFID stealer. Check that out, and we see that there's a single file, cards.txt, just a simple text file. I click on that, and we see here uh, we uh, scanned it a few times. It's a 26 bit card. Here is the uh, hexadecimal notation for that. Uh, badge information. Uh, we actually decoded for you. It's facility code 113 and badge number 6339 as we saw printed on the card. And we actually have the binary as well. So now we've successfully uh, completed step one. We, we've taken this silently stealing badge information and made it a, a realistic possibility where we can from three feet away casually walk by you and steal the information. Now that we have that, we can use tools like the Protsmart to quickly uh, create a cloned fake version of your badge uh, so that we can go use it. Uh, and that is extremely easy. It's a single command. We already have the Protsmart uh, set up here. So what we're going to do is I'm going to go ahead and copy the hexadecimal version of this badge, 6339. Copy. And we're going to come back to our prox mark here. Now the prox mark is in read mode right now, so by hitting this button, I'll stop that. So now uh, we have the badge information from our tool, uh, just this hexadecimal uh, value. And what we're going to do is take this programmable T557 card, uh, which is a uh, programmable card that doesn't read like anything right now. Um, and we can turn this, uh, this is just a sticky note. It's clearly not the 6339 badge. Let's put a uh, post-it on there. Uh, it's programmable. So I just lay that on top of the uh, antenna here. And uh, if we look uh, right here, all I'm gonna do is type in LF for low frequency, hit, because it's a hit card, clone, space, and then I'm just going to paste in that value we took from our cards.txt file. And click enter. And we see cloning tag with that value that we stole, done. So right now, this card is functionally an exact duplicate of the card that we stole, 6339. So let's test it out. Um, so we have our original again. Uh, badge number 6339. Um, they have our, the original card, 66339. And it's a prox card to you. You go up here. 6339 still. Now we take our clone card, this card which is clearly not that same card, it just has my stick on it. That third we just grade handwriting on there. We come up to it. Badge 6339. 
the SODI code 113, 26 bit card. So now we've successfully stolen and now made a fake copy of this person's badge. Cool. So pretty easy now, right? Um, the uh, you know, hopefully you guys can get up and running with this kind of tool. And uh, it's at this point, I've been able to train some of our consultants to do it now in about ten minutes. Here's the uh, on switch, which is also the off switch uh, on the back. Um, you know, go forth and prosper. So um, with that, uh, what we're talking about here is low frequency. Uh, I saw with some of the articles that came out, people were posting links to high frequency long range antennas and uh, things like that. But we're talking the uh, 125 kilohertz low frequency technology for physical security systems. And in looking at that, people have known about these issues for quite some time. Uh, but the, the interesting thing to me was that no one's really done anything about it yet. Uh, this came from HID Global directly from a, a post they had. Uh, recently saying that 70 to 80 percent of physical security systems out there still use this legacy uh, low frequency uh, technology that we're exploiting here. Um, despite us having known for quite some time and they admit that you know there's no security, they've been hacked, we know this, uh, they're not resistant to any uh, of these kind of common attacks um, yet they still persist. And then just looking at that, one of the motivations behind doing this talk um, actually after creating the tools was I noticed that you know, we see in uh, Chris Pagan's talk from 2007, you know, it, it couldn't be any simpler. If you're using this technology for your doors, you're highly insecure. I mean, it's just a big bullet, that's it. Um, that's 2007 and those quotes came from this blog post in uh, June of 2013. So from 2007 to 2013, we've made about zero progress uh, in terms of upgrading uh, these physical security systems. And that blog post is actually pretty interesting and goes on to uh, talk about some other reasons why uh, the physical security uh, product life cycle is about 20 years they estimate. So most of the things out there were bought in the early 90s. Um, HID offers more secure solutions but people have you know bought and installed products from 20 years ago uh, and are just more than happy with it. Uh, so for some extent it's uh, ignorance on the part of the, the, uh, the people making the purchase decisions, they just don't realize um, that these things are this insecure um, as well as there's budget issues. So what we're looking at here is uh, a basic breakdown of what's happening for uh, a badging system for a door. Uh, there's, there's four main components uh, and coincidentally if we're thinking about doing a pen test, those are the four areas that we'll want to target. So with this attack, uh, we're targeting the card directly. We're going to the local Starbucks in your building we want to break into or hang out in the smoke area or something like that and targeting the cards that are on somebody's person. These cards uh, basically when they come within uh, near distance of a reader like this, uh, the reader powers it and it just starts singing out 26 to 37 ones and zeros. That's it. As soon as it gets powered it just starts singing this out depending on uh, uh, what they have. And then the reader uh, just reads these off the air. Uh, and then encodes them in uh, Wigan protocol, which I'll talk about in a little bit, and just forwards them on to the controller to make the decision about whether to open the door or not. Um, and then you have the uh, host PC where a physical security guard will be sitting at to add new users and monitor, um, you know, cameras and things like that. So, in breaking this down, in doing this initial research, it was like pulling teeth. I mean just trying to understand what was going on with these things, what, what's written on the card, how far away can I be, uh, every, every question that would jump to your mind um, if you didn't know anything about RFID hacking, uh, it would be like the 130th Google hit or some random product manual that I found the answer in. Um, so I tried to compile as much of them I could here to, to make it easy. But uh, one of the questions that come up is if I saw somebody's badge, if I looked at the number on the back, is that enough information for me to make a fake copy of it? You know, if you went on Google Images and somebody took a picture and you saw their badge number, you know, could you make a, a copy of that? Uh, well, the, the short answer is um, maybe if they're, uh, uh, so basically those 26 to 37 ones and zeros that it sings out the card when it comes to your reader, um, those eventually get interpreted by uh, a controller and the way they get interpreted is 
um, basically what they call the card format, which typically breaks down into your card ID and, the, and a facility code. Uh, what's written on the card is the card ID, which is part of what you need. Um, if they're using a standard 26 bit card, then there's only 255 uh, f possible facility codes. So technically with that I could just try that card number and facility code 1, facility code 2, facility code 3 um, and uh, pretty quickly be able to brute force based on what you visually see on the card. If they've implemented like a 35 bit card or something um, then uh, it wouldn't be as easy to do. Uh, there's also, you'll typically see on these cards uh, one number and then a space and then a longer number. That longer number is just a sales order number. I found it in a product manual. It's if you want to buy more cards when you call the sales guy you read them that number. It has nothing to do with authentication or getting you in the door or anything like that. Um, so good to know. And this is what I'm talking about with the uh, ‑‑ so in, in reading this as well, it's, I saw things from 20, your standard 26 bit card or your, your corporate 35 bit card and then you hear that they're 44 bit cards and then in the prox marks you see typically when t tools that are accessing them are 10 hexadecimal digits which is only 40 bits. So what exactly is going on with the card was a little, uh, a little confusing uh, to me because people didn't really make it clear. So just to make it clear what's actually going on, it sings out 26 to 37 bits in the air. It's always 44 bits on the card. And what we see here, I, I scanned this in from a product manual and no, uh, put the notation in there myself. Uh, typically the, or always the first uh, hexadecimal will be a zero which usually gets dropped which is why you see it as ten. You see the full version there of eleven hexadecimal digits but starting with a zero. So what happens is there's always 44 bits in the card which you see up there. Uh, the standard 26 bit is what you see on the right. And then there, uh, it starts. Come on, man. Everyone, look at that guy with the, with the stare. Uh, so it's uh, it's always every single card. It starts with six zeros and a one. Every single card, six zeros and a one. And then there's a buffer of ten zeros, and then a, a parity uh, or sentinel bit, and then your 26 bits. So if you have a 35 bit card or anything up to 37, all it does is extend to the left there using that buffer of those 10 zeros. And that's the full 44 bits that are on the card. So mystery solved. Um, this is on low frequency stuff and mainly for breaking into buildings. Uh, but it, this, these type of attacks and the techniques that we're going for here are going to be only become more applicable as we, as we go on. Um, we're starting to see them in credit cards and uh, the U.S. now, um, passports and my favorite. Who here is a Disney fan? Anybody a Disney, Disneyland, Disney World? Yeah. So Disney is going over to RFID for everything. So you know it's going to be fun experiments, some field research, get uh, you know get some fast passes to get to the front of the lines and things like that. Um, see you see the band there on somebody's wrist. Everything from getting in the front door of Disney World to getting your fast passes for the rides to paying for things to your hotel room are all going to be, it's all RFID based, they're rolling it out right now. So these things are just, you know, people are finding more and more uses for RFID technology that are going to be fun to do pen tests for. Um, a couple of the tools that you want to have in your arsenal uh, besides uh, our tool here, um, I would definitely recommend the Proxmark. You can get cheaper versions uh, but the nice Polis version is uh, $3.99. Um, you can use it as we saw in the one video for making clone cards. Uh, it has all kinds of purposes that are, uh, that are great for doing RFID hacking. Um, it does have a single button on it. That, you see that workflow there? <laughs> one crazy workflow for the single button on top of the Proxmark uh, which is a little fun. It's like stand on one foot and hold the button for four and a half seconds until it blinks red and orange and then hold it longer. Uh, that's, that's literally the one button's workflow um, which is pretty, pretty cool. Uh, another cool thing with the Proxmark is uh, there's a tool called the Prox Brute. Have any of you guys heard of the Prox Brute before? Handful of people. So the Prox Brute is just uh, custom firmware uh, that someone from uh, McAfee, um, a guy named Brad, released that you could load onto the Proxmark and, uh, and use it to do brute forcing. So each of these badges, we saw the card number and facility code. Once you have like a valid badge, if you stole maybe, you know, just a normal worker's 
uh, badge information to get in the front door. But you want to get in the data center and that person didn't have access. Well, they're, the card numbers themselves are sequential. So you could use this tool and the Proxmark will simulate being a badge and it will try that number, the next badge number, the next badge number. So uh, it will allow you to brute force um, a, a different badge number to get into a data center or more secure area uh, than the uh, actual badge that you stole which is great. And it has a similar crazy workflow uh, for that one button which is altered there uh, which you see. Um, also there is uh, Adam Laurie stuff, the RF idiot scripts. So Adam Laurie who's uh, done a bunch of talks um, over time has compiled a bunch of different Python scripts for doing RFID hacking. Um, and he just keeps adding to them. So for all sorts of different purposes. So I would definitely recommend checking that out as well as it uh, one uh, convenience is that the software it all comes loaded on Backtrack. So all you need to do is get the equipment, uh, uh, plug the USB in and uh, fire up Backtrack and you could be up and running and, and doing some stuff pretty quickly. Uh, these are extremely cool. Has anyone seen these tools before from RF ideas? Okay, I, I don't typically, I don't think I've ever seen this in a security presentation on RFID. I happen to just stumble across it. And basically it's just two little uh, USB sticks about that size. It requires no software. It's for field testing for people that install this type of equipment. Uh, and basically one of the questions that I had that I wanted to answer was what if I don't know what kind of card this is? What if I don't know what technology it's using? Uh, take the Disney example. The Disney stuff doesn't have identifying, it has all Walt Disney stuff on their cards. It doesn't have what kind of card it, it actually is. So if I wanted to figure out what technology it was, I would use um, uh, these things. They say they have a high frequency and a low frequency little USB stick. You plug it in, you open up Notepad, uh, you lay a card on top of it and click print screen uh, and in Notepad it will tell you not only what the badge information is but exactly what technology it is. Uh, which matters for um, uh, being able to understand what kind of tools you're going to need to to break into it. So pretty cool. And then um, again, this is this is our tool again, which you saw the demonstration of already. Uh, I programmed in there. Uh, you see a 35-bit card. Uh, basically, you'll be able to uh, get one of those circuit boards I'm about to give out, or go to our website. Um, I should be up tomorrow. Uh, uh, download the uh, the code that you could send away to anyone that makes circuit boards and for about 30 bucks they'll, they'll send you a copy. Then you buy the uh, parts that you need, load the code uh, that we have, it will be on our website and be up and running. You, you essentially plug this into any RFID uh, uh, reader that there is for any of the technologies. So as we'll see, uh, simple missile switch in the back, easily from three feet away. Um, I designed it, uh, what I'll be releasing, I designed it in fritzing. How many of you guys are familiar with fritzing? Anybody? To play around with it? Um, which uh, allows us, I'll be releasing that and you uh, can actually export it to extended Gerber to send away to actually get the board. That's a picture of the board that I'll be giving away um, after the talk. And essentially you could take, you could take this board and it just basically has two inputs and two outputs. It's taking in the output of a reader. Uh, like this one here, it's taking in the batteries and it's outputting the badge number to a screen and to a text file on the card. Uh, that's as simple as you could think of how the board is working. Um, and it, it's tapping that output of the reader is this uh, Wiegand uh, output that I mentioned earlier, which every single badge reader has this output uh, and they typically use. So those 26 to 37 ones and zeros, basically there's data one and data zero. If it, for each one it sends a pulse on data one, for each zero it sends a pulse on data zero. And we're just tapping into that. Uh, so essentially you could use this for any type of uh, badge system. So the two main ones for physical security are uh, HID procs and Indala procs uh, for the low frequency, which technically are both owned by the company HID at this point. Um, but if I held a, uh, a HID badge up to an Indala reader, it wouldn't do anything. Or if I held an Indala card up to a HID reader, it wouldn't do anything. So but between these two long distance readers, one of which you see here, uh, you're pretty much covered with 99% of the badges that people would have out there. So you could take my board, uh, plug it into the HID reader which we have here and if you notice it's not working, you could plug it into the long distance Indala reader uh, and just walk around and grab people's Indala cards as well. Um, you see uh, the proven secure lies uh, written there for Indala. Indala uh, claims to be more secure. 
um, and they have a lot of people convinced that it is. Uh, instead of just singing out the ones and zeros, it does a little bit of obfuscation, um, which doesn't even matter because if we're using an actual Andala reader like we are, it does all the decoding for you. So, um, <laughs> you know, it's it, it is just it, so it's very easy to do, and you know, we've made fake versions, and so both of these are just as susceptible. Um, and finally, uh, I just plugged in with the Arduino. Uh, uh, an SD card and writing it to a text file for, for ease, but there are plenty of Arduino add ons uh, that you can imagine when we play around with an add next from, uh, you know, adding Bluetooth capabilities so I could see the badges on my phone as they're being read, or, you know, even uh, cell phone capability to have a text message mean uh, every badge that it sees if I leave it somewhere else. Um, these things would be relatively easy to add on uh, to this type of technology. Chopping no eaves, Mr. Gandalf. Uh, basically, <laughs> basically, if you guys are aware of any tools that do this attack, um, you can let me know. I've heard people talk about it in theory and some PhD papers, but the the, the distance uh, limitation uh, that we're now getting with three feet um, and what centimeters before is due to powering the card, not actually reading the ones and zeros that it's singing out. So people have talked about if you leave something near the front door of an actual building and you let the real reader of that door power their card, you can listen for those ones and zeros from further away. Um, and I know that uh, Chris Pagan's uh, talk, he had mentioned uh, being able to get up to 10 feet with this uh, in this passive mode, letting someone else power it. This tool obviously never was released uh, due to legal reasons, I believe. Um, and I haven't seen any other tools that actually successfully do it. But it is something to be aware of uh, in terms of uh, getting further distance still. Making a copy of the card. Uh, I mentioned this in the video. The, uh, what you would want to get are these T55X7 cards. There's all kind of, they're like a dollar. Um, you could buy them online. Oh, uh, just a note all these slides, my notes sections are like white papers, links to everything you would want uh, for each topic are in there, and I'll have links to where you could buy these. But these things are not blank cards, uh, they sim they're programmable cards. So they'll simulate the data and behavior of any type of card. And what I meant by when I mentioned a HID card wouldn't work with Indala and an Indala card wouldn't work with HID, these cards can behave like an Indala card or they can behave like a HID card. So they could simulate any type of card and the data on them. So I mean they're definitely something you want to have in your, your arsenal too and you can reprogram them as much as you want to be your, uh, your fake versions of cards. Uh, finally, if people start, uh, you know, using uh, RFID blocking wallets and stuff like that, uh, we got to move down the line of what we're attacking. Uh, there are things out there where you can, you know, pop open the, the uh, lid of the reader and uh, start dumping things off the readers and attacking them directly. Uh, there's a man in the middle tool uh, called Gecko where you, you plug it in the reader and as people badge in, it's writing them all uh, to something as well. And I didn't really design my circuit board to be used in that way, but I realized afterwards. Uh, with a little minor alterations, um, you could use that circuit board. All I'm doing is tapping into the output of a real reader. You could take that circuit board, go to the front of a building that you're trying to break into, pop the lid off, insert it, and have it sit there, you know, and record all the other real badges that are coming through that reader. So you could use it in this way as well. Um, and uh, this Brad, um, I'll butcher his last name in. Antonovich from, the, the, from uh, McAfee, the guy that actually made that Prox Brute software I'm talking about, uh, he has a project here uh, that you can see where he's come up with tons of scripts and things to uh, attack the readers and attack the controllers directly, which are pretty cool. I would recommend checking out. Uh, lastly, um, once you get in, you want to not be in the building uh, any longer than you have to be. So I recommend, uh, many of you are familiar with the poem plug? Right, cool. So it's just going to be your little personal VPN, your back door into their network. Uh, it's a thousand dollars for the regular pwn plug and fifteen hundred for the power pwn. Uh, it's pretty cool looking. Uh, it's a little hefty. I would recommend a lot of people are coming out with uh, images for the Raspberry Pi that allow them to effectively do the same exact thing. Uh, from even from Pony Express, the people that make the pwn plug, you got the Raspberry Pwn, the Rogue Pi, the Pwn Pi. So for thirty-five dollars instead of fifteen hundred dollars. You can create your own uh, little backdoor um, to be on the network, and you see there people use you know hollowed out uh, old laptop chargers, things like that, put the Raspberry Pi in it to be their own little backdoor, uh, which is pretty cool. Um, I think we're just about out of time, so I'm going to skip the defenses. Uh, yeah, avoid being probes. 
Um, I don't know if this will help you out or not, but it's very fashionable. Uh, so uh, I would recommend upgrading your systems if possible to the contactless smart cards, the high frequency stuff. These things could do challenge response, authentication, have encryption. Uh, there's more secure products out there. Um, if you're a company that has 100,000 employees, placing everybody's badges and you know every single door out there might be not that realistic, uh, at least in any kind of good time frame. So uh, in order to get around that, what I would recommend is you know changing, um, uh, using things like anomaly detection uh, software so that if I badge in at 8 in the morning every morning but all of a sudden I'm badging in at 4 in the morning in a building I never go to, you can have it uh, you know generate an alert and flag you. Um, also you have the uh, protective sleeves um, that uh, I'll talk about more in a second. But uh, you want to not wear your badge in prominent view so I can't make a, a realistic uh, looking picture of it. Uh, security screws that um, prevent people from easily popping the lid off your reader on your door instead of just normal uh, screws. Um, and there's also ones uh, some of your readers have to check with tamper detect mechanisms that will send an alert if someone's messing with the reader. And then finally the last uh, slide is that uh, those protective sleeves that you would get, some of them work and some of them don't. So before you buy 100,000 of them for your employees, uh, make sure that it works. This is uh, a green card uh, protective sleeve uh, which one of our employees is from Scotland, uh, very charming fellow and he has his green card uh, which has RFID in it and it has this uh, sleeve that you should keep it in at all times to prevent communication with your, with your card. It doesn't work at all. Um, it might, it's probably just a piece of paper. So I, I don't know how they got overselling that to the federal government for every single green card. Um, but it doesn't work at all. So, and in my experience, there's no rhyme or reason. It's about half of them work, half of them don't. So get a sample, test it out before you buy them in bulk for your company. And that's it. Thank you.